Getting into the details, you know what I'm talking about. All of a sudden, we heard this terrible news that Jimi Hendrix had died of a drug overdose. And he had been one of our generation's idols. I mean, he was, he stood for everything that, you know, that we wanted to stand for, you know, and, and he was a great musician, a great guitar player, and he died of a drug overdose. And it was then that we began wondering, maybe, maybe the counterculture, as he's calling it, is maybe something's wrong there too, you know, maybe drugs and free love and, 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 and parting and music and rock music and all that isn't the answer. And so, you. you could take it from here, right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we started going to museums, studying art, trying to find spiritual symbolism to it. And I would go astray from Gary quite a bit, just alone to cathedrals and monasteries and synagogues, just to find some solace and meditation and meet people. <clears throat> and at one point, we were in Athens, Greece. And there, it was a different scenario than the rest of Europe. The rest of Europe, we just hitchhiked and wherever the ride took us, we went there. In Athens, there was police on the streets patrolling with machine guns. And there was very strict vagrancy laws. So we could just sleep in a park or under a tree and there were no crash pads there. There was a hostel, a youth hostel, but it cost money. <laughs> and we had absolutely nothing. So at that time, we resorted to a traditional method of economics according to the counterculture of tr world travelers at the time. And Gary will tell you that story. <laughs> I didn't realize I was going to be up here, but I'll do the best I can. Because whatever Radhanath wants is what I want. Um, we, we sold blood. You get paid to sell blood. Even though we'd heard ghastly stories of how they would take long-haired guys like us and take all the blood out of you and then throw your body into the, <laughs> into the sea, we sold our blood nevertheless because like Rod and I said, we had to find a way to get into the youth hostel. And should I tell about the band? And tell about how painful the process oh, was. Oh, the needles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the needles were thick and fat and <laughs> uncomfortable. They syringes. They went <laughs> really painful. Oh, wow. And I remember laying there looking at Radhanath and thinking, how did we ever, how did it end up, we come from such good homes and such, how did we ever end up on this dirty cot in this medical clinic in Athens selling our blood to get enough to eat and spend for the night. I remember thinking, thank God my mother doesn't can't see me. Anyways, um, it was a terrible experience. The needles were thick and they were painful. And, uh, but we did get paid for it, and you get a glass of orange juice at the end, and that's something. <laughs> we had to find another way to make money, which we did, and Rod and Ath will tell you, <laughs> unless you'd like me to tell you. What's wrong, Gary? Come on now. Well, I'll say a few words and then give it back to Gary. <laughs> you didn't tell me I was going to help him tonight, but we it's an honor. Actually, I'm helping you. <laughs> <laughs> they made you wait half hour before they gave you any money. Because so many people would fall unconscious when they'd go outside in the streets because it was really a painful ordeal the way they did it in those days. So while we were waiting, we got a little glass of orange juice. And Gary was, there must be a better way. And I was also thinking like that and there was a Swiss boy with a violin case who was like this. 
They had long hair, a counterculture kind of person, and then there was a French guy, same looking, he had a guitar case. And he was like this, drinking orange juice. And we all looked at each other and decided, let us start a band. <laughs> <laughs> and right enough, what he didn't tell you was he was a great harmonica player. He had studied the blues harp from some of the best harmonica players at the time. Well, I wasn't worried. <laughs> he loves me, so he says like this. <laughs> Actually, he's, he's being modest here, but he was a very talented um, musician, a blues harpist. And these two guys, one guy had been trained in classical violin, the other guy was a very good guitar player. And I was really good at passing around a hat, so <laughs> we thought we, um, an idea came that we would make music together and we would walk around Athens at the, at the outdoor cafes making music and people loved us. They were rocking out to our music and they were filling the hat with money and we, went, we were living really, really by our standards. We were living we got really, a, we really... We got a bunk bed in the hostel. <laughs> that was for us, that was five star. And food, all the food we needed. I mean, we were just, you know, thought maybe I could retire on that situation. But um, those police that Rod and Oth had mentioned that looked like stormtroopers that were patrolling the streets of Athens at the time, uh, they found us one day and they they came and they arrested us. They, they put us in jail and said, this is illegal here. They took all of our money and said, uh, you know, if we catch you doing this again, we're throw, locking you up and throwing away the key. And that was the end of our uh, music career in Athens. But it was great while it lasted. And we didn't have to give blood. So uh, it was a wonderful gig. And they love his harmonica. One side, I'll tell you a little story. When he was coming on the plane over, to meet me, um, he sat next to a rock idol of our time named Johnny Winters. I don't know if any oh, yeah. of you are old enough to remember. And the plane was delayed, and 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 the woman sitting next to Rodinath at the time his hair was down to his belt. She was just didn't want to sit next to a disgusting creature like him. And she went to the. They looked at us pretty disgusting. You know, I had a big beard and long hair. You can see pictures in the book of us, and. Um, Somehow she had convinced the uh, flight attendant um, to remove, put her in somewhere else and put another long-haired guy next to Radanath, who turned out to be Johnny Winters. And, 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 and Johnny Winters saw Radanath's harmonica in his little harmonica case and said, you play harmonica and you, the blues harp? And to make a long story short, they had a rock concert. They, they had an impromptu uh, jam session on that airplane. <laughs> so he has played with some of the top musicians in the world. <laughs> He's being very modest. He was very, very talented. Uh, Remember when we came off together? Yeah, we... Gary, Johnny Winter had a beautiful Danish model waiting for him. And I had Gary. <laughs> <laughs> And Gary was really impressed when I was coming off like arm in arm with Johnny Winter and and Johnny embraced his model and I embraced Gary. <laughs> <laughs> this model's long gone, but you still got me. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are a model. So then um, I remember Gary said to me, don't you wish she was with you instead of me? And I, don't you wish she was waiting for you instead of me? I said, well, we're going on a spiritual quest. I think I'll be less distracted with you. <laughs> what Gary didn't say is we did hide some of that money, with drachmas is the name of the currency, from the police. And we had enough to take a ferry to the Isle of Crete. And there we wanted to just completely absorb ourselves in our spiritual quest. In Italy, we were really spiritually absorbed. And then we went to Greece. And in the Isle of Crete, we found a cave we lived in on the southern coast. <laughs> 